The big game has come and gone with your number two ranked University of St. Francis football team losing 35 to 21 to defending national champion and number one ranked Marion. A tough loss for the Cougs in their first real test of the season. Yeah, I have two best teams in the country. Um, you know, if you're in this business and you're not disappointed, then you're in the wrong business. So, you know, uh, taking a defeat like that is a difficult one. Uh, you know, being the CEO of the operation here, everything falls back in my lap. Needed to prepare our team better for the fourth quarter. We lost the fourth quarter, and uh, you know, that comes back to me. And there's certain things you can do, I think, to prepare for that. But it's the first time we've had to play in the last 12 minutes of a ball game with our starters. So we'll have to do a better job the next time. You know, they're an outstanding football team, so are we. Um, so I'm sure we'll see each other uh, a couple months down the road. St. Francis finished the game with five turnovers. Marion had zero. Cougs quarterback Nick Ferrer was sacked six times. Marion quarterback Lucas Johnson was sacked just once. Despite those two key factors, St. Francis had a real shot of winning the game. That's true. I, I mean, with the turnovers, um, with the sacks, you would think, you know, it would be a total blowout. And, uh, you know, those are the things we've got to eliminate when we, when we go to the next round. I mean, you just can't turn the ball over. We had more sacks uh, Saturday than we've had the entire season. We've had more interceptions than we've had the entire season. And, you know, we're still in, in reaching distance uh, of getting it pulled off. But anyway, uh, we got a ways to go and uh, we're anxious to get back out on the field uh, this weekend. You know, from a defensive line standpoint, we were really good at stopping the run, and we shut, we shut their running game down. They usually averaged about 250 yards per game until they met us, and I think we held them to about 115. But as far as the passing game goes, we just couldn't really get anything going. Um, you know, Marion's offensive line did a great job of uh, keeping us out of the quarterback, and we just gotta do a better job of that working forward. Uh, their O line was very good at picking up our blitzes and our um, pass stunts. They knew what was coming almost every time, and um, they've, they've played together for about two years now. So they have a they have a solid group there, and um, just got you know five guys working together every play. Defensive tackle Eric Hemmelgarn finished the game with seven tackles, while leading the Cougars with three and a half tackles for a loss. The six foot five inch, 290 pound sophomore has been a force for Coach Donnelly in the middle of the defense. Well, he's a great football player. He's a big, strong young man, great family, great person, great character. Uh, and he's just uh, overpowering in the middle. I mean, he's a real force to be reckoned with. Big factor in our defensive success so far. And uh, just uh, wish him well and keep doing more of the same. Yeah, I feel like I did a very good job of stopping the run Saturday. And I had a decent pass rush, but obviously not good enough. We only had one sack throughout both the units of defensive linemen that were on the field, and that's unacceptable. We gotta do a better job of that going forward. But I thought as far as the run game, the third down stops, I thought I got a, a great push, and I made a couple great plays that helped our team out. It was an emotional day with the highs of playing in front of a packed house to the lows of coming up short in a monumental matchup. Yeah, it was. It was neat to see all the people tailgating early in the morning right after team breakfast and just seeing all the fans out there, um, you know, watching us warm up early before the game. That was also a neat thing to be a part of. And just right when the game started, the fans were in it the whole time, every play. And we made some great plays and Marion made some plays, but we came right back and the fans are with us the whole time and I really appreciated that and I know our team really appreciated that as well. So it was a good thing to be a part of and hopefully we can get that every home game. After the game we went in the locker room and we were all, we were all disappointed. We knew that um, we could very easily beat that team and we beat ourselves like you said with the, with the five turnovers. We didn't, we didn't force a single one and we gotta, we gotta do that in order for our team to be successful. So we have to do a better job of that throughout the whole season. And if we see them again, we have to do a better job doing that. But we knew that um, Marion was going to be a tough game and they're definitely a beatable team. And we have to get at least one to two turnovers a game in order for our team to be successful. And from here on out, that's just going to be the focus going forward. After this week's coaches poll came out, 
St. Francis found out that it had dropped three spots from number two to number five. While conference foe Concordia jumped into the top 25, and Siena Heights is now receiving votes. Yeah, that's about what I expected. You know, I'm a Raider, so I, you know, I see what goes on. Um, so now you got four undefeateds ahead of us. That's fine. A um, couple of them ahead of us still have big games ahead. I mean, we do too, for that matter. Um, you know, Siena Heights is a, a formidable opponent. Uh, they're three and one. Concordia four and one. Robert Morris, good football team. Missouri Baptist beats Taylor. Davenport's four and two, probably going to be ranked. So, um, you know, we're going to be challenged the next five weeks. Uh, we, we get through this gauntlet, you know, we'll, we'll be good and ready for postseason. This week's challenge has the Cougars traveling two hours north to Adrian, Michigan to take on the Saints, a team that lost 41 to nothing at Concordia back on September the 17th. Well, they made significant changes after that game. They didn't show up in Ann Arbor that day, and they got humiliated, and they made some changes, and they're a different football team against St. X. Uh, you know, they're big, strong kids. They're good athletes. Uh, we run into them recruiting. Uh, Jim Lyle, the, the coach that, that started that program, uh, retired. Uh, they get a new head coach right now. And, uh, you know, so they're experiencing uh, some growing pains, and uh, they, uh, they're they getting better each and every week. After uh, the uh, Concordia loss, you can see some significant improvement in going into St. X, and they're gonna continue. They've had two weeks to prepare for us. So, uh, you know, we've gotta have a great week of preparation and be ready to play. You know, it's gonna be a tough game. Uh, we're gonna be on the road for the first time in over a month, so we're gonna be playing at their place, and they're gonna be ready for us, especially since we we're coming off our first loss of the season. They're gonna throw everything at us and try to beat us for a second straight time. So we can't let that happen. We gotta, we gotta control what we can control and we gotta go in there and put them away right away. From snap to whistle, baby. That's the credo that Coach D preaches. And after the tough loss to Marion, the message is very clear. Well, we have to get better each and every day in each and every ball game. We have to improve our goal, our challenge to our team on Sunday is that we all have to commit to improving at a more rapid rate than anybody else in any football. That's going to take a real focus and a real effort. It's going to take us as coaches being creative and creating some, some game situations um, late in a practice session so that we're stronger in the fourth quarter and at the same time uh, maintain some, some health to the team. Um, you, know, you get into the, the halfway point, uh, that's when you start having the bumps and bruises and pains and you got to be tough enough to, to overcome it. That's what we have to do in order to be successful and everybody in the locker room has accepted that challenge and we're going to start off on Tuesday by being to meetings on time, being to practice on time, going as hard as you can and understanding what your assignment is by your position coach.